Okay, using reference angles. This is a really important skill to get down to understand how to compute reference angles and then how to use them to do these computations for all these different angles. So in this video, I've got two degree measure angles and two radian measure angles. Let's work through these kind of quickly and talk about the intricacies of this. All right, so in this first one, we wanna find the reference angle and then get, use that to get the exact value of cosine of 150 and sine of 150. So as you get going on this, you gotta place 150 degrees is hopefully pretty obviously the measure that we're concerned about as far as angles go. Got to get that in the right quadrant first. So understanding our quadrantal angles, um, I think 150 degrees fits in between 90 and 180. So this is going to fit into the second quadrant. So I'm just going to kind of roughly sketch that into the second quadrant. That's 150 degrees going around that far. Next, let me go ahead and draw in where the reference angle is going to fit. The reference angle always gets drawn to the x-axis. So it's going to be the angle that I've just highlighted here in blue, and we need to go ahead and compute that. All right, so I'm representing that with theta bar. So theta bar representing our reference angle. The computation to, to get that is going to be 180 degrees, the further of these two angles um, that make uh, these degree measures that make up this angle. So the further one wrapping around further is going to be 180 minus the shorter one, which is 150. So our reference angle is going to be 30 degrees. All right, next, let's see if we can use this to compute 150 degrees when we plug it into both cosine and sine. And it's really not that bad, but what you want to do is we want to be able to just fill in and say cosine of 150 degrees is equal to cosine of 30 degrees and sine of 150 degrees is equal to sine of 30 degrees. We want to fill in those reference angles, but we have to be super, super careful on this about positive or negative. It's as soon as you plug in this reference angle that you have to be double checking should it be positive or negative based on the quadrant of our original angle. So I'm thinking about this 150 landed us into the second quadrant. And I always use this phrasing, all students take calculus. All right, we're really concerned about the second quadrant. Um, everything's positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant and it's reciprocal cosecant. Tangent's the only one that's positive in the third quadrant and it's reciprocal cotangent. Cosine's the only thing positive in the fourth quadrant, as well as secant, it's reciprocal. So our angle is in the second quadrant. Sine is gonna be positive. So I'm gonna go ahead and indicate it's positive by putting plus out in front, but cosine is gonna be negative in the second quadrant. So this is the point, as soon as you plug in the, the reference angle, you have to double check positive or negative and get the appropriate sign out in front. Now, technically you don't have to put a plus out in front here. It means, the same, it means positive even without the plus sign out in front. But now we have these kind of nice angles. 30 degrees comes up a whole lot in our computations. So we can evaluate this. I know that it's gonna be negative, just carrying this negative sign along. But then cosine of 30 degrees is gonna be square root of three over two. And then sine of 30 degrees is gonna be one half. I did not bring along this positive out in front. It's automatically positive when I don't indicate a sign out in front. All right, so not that bad, but you have to be able to double check positive or negative as soon as you go and wanna plug in this reference angle. All right, in this next one, we're in radian measure. So we can concern ourselves with five pi over four. So as we think about our quadrantal angles, pi over two is here at the top, one pi is over here, three pi over two or one and a half pi's is down here. And then we have two pi or zero over on the right hand side. All right, so five pi over four, that's an improper fraction, meaning bigger than one. So it's not gonna be in the first or second quadrant, it's bigger than one pi, but it's smaller than one and a half pi's. That's what three halves means. So that's gonna land us out here into the third quadrant and we can say five pi over four wraps around this far. If I wanna draw in our reference angle, it always goes to the x-axis. So it's gonna be right in here. 
So this time, again, labeling that with theta bar to represent our reference angle. Theta bar, the computation here is going to be 5 pi over 4. All right, that's the further side we get to on this angle. Minus the shorter side is going to be pi. Or I could write that as 5 pi over 4 minus 4 pi over 4. Thinking, got to get a common denominator. So 1 pi is equivalent to 4 divided by 4 pi's. So our reference angle is going to be pi over 4. So now we want to compute what's cosine of 5 pi over 4. And we want to compute sine of 5 pi over 4. So this is the point where we want to plug in our reference angle. So pi over 4 as we plug this in to each of these. But now is where we also want to double check positive or negative. And remember, that's as soon as we want to plug in this reference angle. So all students take calculus. We're in the third quadrant. Only tangent is going to be positive in the third quadrant. So cosine and sine both get negatives. And then I'm going to look this up on my chart. I know that um, cosine of pi over 4, pi over 4 is one of these angles that comes up a ton, is square root of 2 over 2, bringing that negative along. Same thing for sine of pi over 4, bring the negative along that's out in front. All right, two more of these real quickly to give you a hang of it. All right, so next we're back into degrees. We have 315 degrees. Let's find its reference angle. Again, knowing these quadrantal angles, 90, 180, 270, and 360 is very helpful. All right, 315 bigger than 270, smaller than 360. So it wraps around, puts us into the fourth quadrant. All right, next up, after we know we're in the fourth quadrant, Let's draw in our reference angle. It's going to get drawn to the x-axis. So that's theta bar. And that computation is going to be 360 degrees minus 315 degrees. So 360 minus 315 is going to, again, be 45 degrees. Pretty nice angle, 45 degrees. So to compute cosine of 315, we can fill in that 45 degrees. But as soon as we do that, we want to double check. All students take calculus. We're in the fourth quadrant. Cosine is going to be positive. So we're good to go on that, which works out to be square root of 2 over 2. We also wanted to figure out sine of 315 degrees. So as soon as we fill in that 45 degrees, our reference angle, this is where we double check the sign, the positive and negative sign. In this case, we're in the fourth quadrant, only cosine's positive. So sine is going to be negative. That's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. All right, one more of these. Let's go ahead and figure out when we're given a negative angle, negative pi over 6. So if you'll recall, going in the negative direction is going to be going clockwise. So starting with our initial side at the x-axis and moving clockwise, that's going to still be in the first quadrant. Maybe not super accurately drawn here, but if we're moving in the negative direction, this first quadrantal angle would be negative pi over 2. All we've gone is negative pi over 6, so it has to be in the first quadrant. Now the reference angle is again drawn to the x-axis. It's going to work out to be the exact same angle, only a positive case of this. So positive pi over 6, whether you're moving in the negative direction or the positive direction, this angle is going to be the same. However, with reference angles, they're always acute, meaning they're less than 90 degrees or less than pi over 2, and they're always positive. So it's going to be positive pi over 6. Okay, to finish this up, we want to use that reference angle and um, plug in with our cosine of negative pi over 6 is going to be the same thing as the cosine of positive pi over 6. But we want to double check. Our all students take calculus. We are in the fourth quadrant, so cosine is going to be positive. 
And pi over six, one of these nice angles that comes up a lot, is going to work out to be square root of three over two. The other one, figuring out sine of negative pi over six, well, it's going to equal sine of our reference angle, pi over six, but we are in the fourth quadrant, and only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So this is where I want to make sure I have a negative out in front. As soon as I plug in the reference angle, double check positive or negative for each one of these. So it's going to be negative, and then sine of pi over six. Hope this helps out as we're finding reference angles and then utilizing those to evaluate functions uh, of larger angles or negative angles. Good luck.